a uh, as a second career. <laughs> There's nothing else I'd rather be doing than catching blue marlin. I don't want to catch a catfish. I don't want to catch a tuna. I don't want to catch a dolphin. I want to catch a blue marlin. Really don't even want to catch white marlin, but I will. I want to catch blue, you know. My goal in life is to catch a thousand pounds. I don't care if it's a tournament or not, if I, I'm on a thousand pound marlin. And there, there's one out there. He just not grown up yet. Blue marlin's the fastest fish in the ocean. It, it swims 60 miles an hour in the water. I mean, that's flying. You got 130 pounds of razor sharp fishing line moving 60 miles an hour behind your boat. Then the sheer force that they put on you as an angler is just an incredible feeling where you got a fish on it. You use every muscle in your body and you can't move that fish until it wants to be moved. Then when you're getting turned and getting on top of the water, some of the fish charge the boat. They're charging the boat at 60 miles an hour. They're pissed off. Uh, and they've got a sword on the front of their mouth. <laughs> So it was a defending champion. Pretty much had a uh, tournament-wise lousy year. Uh, well, I mean, you did that late. I just, I didn't know if you felt any on the... Just, uh, just had a lot, lot of stuff go wrong for us and not being in the right place and the right time. So we're really feeling good about this one. Defending champions for the release, and we thought, like I said, we're feeling good about it. You know, I definitely would rather have uh, a lot more boats than 32. You know, the 100 range is nice because if you get 100 boats, 25 of them you know aren't very good fishermen. <laughs> and they'll bet money, so it helps. Not to say that we're that good, I'm just saying. Ron Davis, okay. he's my very good friend and fiercest competitor. I think everybody's a <laughs> That's the game. <laughs>
Yeah, we talk daily almost. In fact, unfortunately for me, this trip or uh, this time, I I encouraged him to bet in the uh, kitchen relief. That's Calcutta against me. He might not have. He's certainly got the crew that knows what they're doing and as good a chance as anybody to win that one. This thing in reverse a lot different than you put the other one in reverse. It's all about the boat. Both of them, get it swapped over, um, get the cords off. Um, y'all go ahead and y'all got ice and all that stuff done. All right, let's. Well, well, Chad, if Chad would have got here at 8 o'clock when he was supposed to, you wouldn't have to still be helping him. Uh, Funniest thing I take from that is when we're at the dock at either before or after a tournament and uh, these people walk up and look at us preparing or clean up and say, man, that looks like the funnest job in the world. Well, I've worked hard all my life, but I and the work that these guys put in for three days for a tournament and Five days prior to that, getting ready, they're in the hot sun, they're sweating their ass off, and they're going 24-7. You know, they, they're working on three hours sleep, maybe three hours sleep for three days. And uh, if you put somebody that walked up to the dock and said, that looks like a fun job on that boat, and their story would change real quick. Due to the cost, that keeps a lot of people out of the getting the catch market. Especially in the Gulf Coast, this, this is its most expensive place to fish, just because we got to go so far with fuel burn. Although uh, most other places in the world that offer pretty good marlin fishing is uh, you, know, you go five miles out, well, we don't get to fish till we go 60 miles. And that's when we start fishing. We might go up to 300 miles. Right, here we go in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, the Blue Line Green and Sam for 2022 is officially underway. <laughs> Don't you know. I think our first stop was Marlin Rig. It was, it was completely loaded down with good bait and 
unusual for us. We've had several fish that we've tracked with a sonar, drop live bait on and it wouldn't bite. In fact, the first one we caught, we dropped a live bait on it. It wouldn't bite and put the lures on it and get me. Whatever they want that day. It's like being a vegan or a non-vegan. Right back up. He just took drag. When you hook a marlin close to the rig, you just spray the swimmer off the direction. Nine times out of ten, it wants to get to that structure. It's like they know they can pop that line, and all that line's got to do is touch that steel on a drilling rig. No saving it, no unwinding it. As soon as it touches it, you've lost the fish. So we caught that fish. I think the first time we saw it was maybe 500 yards behind us. It, it was just in the right position, the right place for us to get away from the rig, and it turned direct. It started swimming directly to in between us and the rig was a work boat. It took off right for that boat, outran our boat probably 100 yards in front of us, which is a disaster because my reels pointed behind us, and they swung my chair. I can only go that 90 degrees. And then Blake, being an expert he is, he spun that boat around to match that and at wide, doing it at wide open front speed. So, and then it came up and saw it right in, right on the bow, and went 10 feet away. That's the other He's going to hit that bow and snap, and he just jumped the right way and took off, and we got him away from the rig, so he started and that's a, that was, you know, sheer terror for a little bit. Yeah. It turned out good. Come on. That's all unbelievable. That's insane. Let's go. All right. Woo! I can't believe we caught. I can't. We caught our first two fish, lure fishing. We caught them within uh, 15 minutes each other. Considering we won it, won the last year's with three marlin, to to do that was the first day we were like feeling good. All right, that's him right here. He's 220 foot behind the boat. Oh, left feet, left feet, left feet. Generally, what I found when you do it, when you hook up with a lure, your chances of uh, a bad hookup is like double live bait, which was pretty scary. And to get two of them with a lure first day was feeling strong. And, uh, knew that we still had a lot of tricks in the bag to go at, and we had another two days left. So.
I guess that was a shark deer and then caught, so we're gonna we're gonna hang out here a little bit longer, but then we're gonna get that current's just completely flopped up here. So we're gonna ease when we get if we get done here, we're gonna ease in there where we uh whitey fish last year, um, towards the end of the year and then if it's not hot there we're gonna pick up and run to the elbow because uh, JJ said it was good over there. We generally only catch white marlin when we go out for a white marlin tournament, but this year we caught several unintentionally. Their population's everywhere out there now. That I've been fishing this Gulf tournament, competing for the last four and a half years, and I've never seen the white marlin population like that. All right, well, let's just go ahead and we'll just make this real simple. Let's reel everything up. All right. Just don't, don't pull them real tight, guys. I don't want them to be freaking crinkled all over the place. I'll tell you what, hand me all those leaders. I'm gonna, I'll rig them up up here. That way we ain't got to bring all that crap down. There you go. Right, that's the left shore. Heck, we'll just keep everything in order and I'll just hand it right down to y'all. Oh, my darn. All right, big dog. I appreciate you, bud. We were gonna check some ridges for white, mar white marlin and sailfish. Oh. Caught one of the biggest white marlin, or, or the biggest white marlin we've ever seen or caught and released it. You know, we, it's, it was big enough, we thought it was a blue. Uh, and we'll keep that same chain out wherever it's at, the green chain. Um, and then we'll put the skip bait behind the left behind the left chain and we'll do everything else normal. Roger? Uh, get it up in the rigger so it can get some lift. Y'all stay ready on the longs. 77 foot, get ready. Y'all stay ready on the lawn. Stop, stop pulling it in, guys. It's not on. Reel it up, reel it up, reel, 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 and get ready to put in free spool again. All right, put in free spool and get ready. But pick your rod up. When he bites, then he pointed at it. Hold on, Greg, he's not on, buddy. Get the dredge up, come on. Get it up in the rigger, please. came up there and freaking smacked our skip bait. But he only hit it one time. He didn't like, he just built it. Feel any chafe? 
Well, I, I mean, he hit that bait. I just, I didn't know if you felt any on the, on the leader there. I'm gonna turn a little, I'm gonna turn real slow and try to go down C and pick up some more speed and see if we can't get another bite. That gummit, man. Y'all stay ready on the longs. Get ready on the left one. He's right there, he's still behind us. 100, 180, 90 foot. All right guys, he's right here, get ready. Come out of the drag a little bit, please. Pop him off. All right. Thank the Lord. Oh, look. He's still jumping. That fish, did you see that fish tease all the way up to the freaking boat, man? <laughs> hey, I, can know, I don't know about that. I know one thing. That sucker right there was trying to eat the back of this boat off. I kept looking for him. I dropped the teaser back like six inches, and he'd be like, rah, all up on it. I was like, oh, my God. Come on, baby. Ooh. We got a report that there had already been four blue marlin released, and we said at that point we would have had to catch way too many white marlin to catch that score. Uh, so we went back to blue marlin fishing. Oh, yeah. All right, Greg. I told, told him to leave, and I think we caught it in, uh, about an hour later. I, I could be gone. You know, three days on the ocean with six stinky guys was, uh, <coughs> you start start losing track of stuff real, 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 real. there are just so many little things that can go wrong it's unbelievable but as an owner real or you, you'll see I don't talk much just because my brain's running through all that. All those issues that I have no control over. Absolutely no control. It's, it's a helpless feeling. It's like, you know, on an island by yourself. All right. Way to explain it is, uh, it's like catching a race car. It's, 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 it is num it's, it's unbelievable when everything comes together and it happens. Like, that's why we do it. And we're a little stupid.
beer. All right, 100 on there, but before we do that, let's go ahead. Center consoles, big there, probably 10 boats there this morning, but I didn't see anybody catching center fish. Um, yeah, the water's not as pretty as it is up no. this way. It's pretty damn green, but there's a mile of frustrating thing that I've learned with this is uh, I think we find out how many fish are really out here, you know. Pretty, pretty wild. I don't know. I mean, you go 200 foot beside them, sometimes they'll turn and come to you because they're curious, you know, by nature, but sometimes they don't. And then you slide over and get in front of them and throw them a bait and they bite. It's like, man, 200 foot? Come on. Uh, I don't know, man. Running out of time. Well, we, we were way behind the third day. I think when you asked him how the day's going, how many fish we're gonna catch, and Blake said we need four. It was a shocker to me. He piled on that bait though, man. Was he nervous, Carson, before he got bit, or? He just got nailed out of nowhere. And uh, so, you can see the work they put in to try to get four. It just didn't happen. It's close. Maybe we had an unidentified fish. What, what was that? Well, I had it on the line for two and a half hours, getting one inch per crank. Uh, I used both arms, legs, everything. I couldn't budge the fish. Probably down to the last 20 feet and snaps the line. We don't know what it uh, could have been a shark, could have been a kill marlin. We need two more fish. Even with your life. <laughs> I 
I was going to dive in the cockpit floorboard and probably, and I for sure lose a fish, but I, I <laughs> survived to fish another day. GPS. Go get a GPS gear. Fuck yeah, let's go. Last year, we won the release division with three blue marlin. Uh, this year, we got four blue marlin and a white and didn't even place in our top three with seven to win. I, I don't know the total numbers caught, but it's astronomical. For, for a 30, I think it was 32 boats. Um, I'm guessing at least 60 fish were caught. 60 blue marlin, which is unheard of. <laughs> probably out caught, probably out caught. Well, I know it did. There's more mo with an 80 plus boat fleet last year. This with 30 caught more than all combined last year, which is crazy. Gulf Coast is exploding numbers. I, I really think it, it's, it's somewhere in the 90% luck, 10% skill. But, I mean, the 10's heavy, but you gotta be where that fish is and you gotta be where the fish it wants to eat is at the right time. <laughs> then you gotta have a really good knot and really good line. celebration but what we really need to do is we need to bring up our winning winning team would you once again help us welcome warmly our local team from Orange Beach and their 72 foot Viking and the winners of the 2022 Blue Marlin Grand Championship it just takes time ladies and gentlemen all right And that's why you have a champagne bottle in your hand, my friend. We we love to do a little celebrating. Nick Pratt, the owner, Chris Marlin Hood is the captain. They said they wanted to win this one. They wanted to come back. They won other tournaments. They really wanted this one more than anything else. Let's do it in a countdown in three, two, one. one. You're champions. It just takes. There's nothing better than coming right here to Orange Beach and winning the Grand Championship. We've had a great time <laughs> elsewhere, but here it's a good time. We couldn't be more happier than to come here and win. We appreciate everything that every one of y'all do to put these tournaments on and make this happen. Great fish, beat great competition. So obviously we didn't do enough to make the money we'd like to make, but when you, you can't really complain, complain when it's the best trip you've ever had. What do you say to that? Everybody else had a really good day that day. So, there's, you know, and we went out there and not caught any fish and now everybody else uh, caught, not be good. But, can swallow those losses or can't you can 
a smaller loss that was your best week is a lot easier than your worst week. So there's nothing you can say, just try it again. I'll give you a hundred of them. A hundred? I want half of them. There's a difference between you going or not. I want half. Uh, I'm sorry. I just want to thank you. No, so this is a, uh, oh, should I look at you? <coughs> huh? Look at you. Look at me. So I'm, I'm going to get, you wanted to read. You moved. Huh? <laughs> so, uh, they're all busy with their hobbies and work, and uh, this is kind of my uh, bucket list deal, and they're all behind me doing it, and it keeps me out of their hair. <laughs> and it, by the way, it was our one of our best ever three-day trips. It's just that's how good everybody's gotten in this business of catching marlins and the population growth, so you got to be steady on the game. Yeah. Uh, for this tournament or, you know, for everything, uh, I'm real lucky to have a crew I got. Captain Blake is just dead on. He works harder than anybody I've ever seen. Uh, he knows how to fish. Uh, all the crew uh, have been well trained by him to do what they needed to do when they do it. And there's not a lot of screaming or telling them uh, what to do. They know what to do and they do it. They work their ass off three days, hardly any sleep. Uh, we're already back in, they're out there cleaning the boat. And uh, like I said, I'm very blessed I've had them and uh, proud of them. Right. See ya. Yeah, that represents fuel for the week. Weekend.